Hello and welcome to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and today I'm going to do a two-part video tutorial on how to set up an email server in a Linux environment. The Linux distribution I'm using today is CentOS version 5.5. It is the 64-bit edition and it is based upon Red Hat Enterprise Edition and it is free to download at CentOS.org. The email server I will be setting up is called Zimbra. I will be using the open source version of Zimbra and I downloaded it at the Zimber website. I downloaded the one for the Red Hat 64-bit edition. They did not have one for CentOS, but uh, this will work on the CentOS. Uh, we need to install a few components here. So go to Applications, Add Remove Software. We need to set up our DNS. So go to Servers, DNS, check it, hit Apply, and Install. It just takes a moment. And there's two other um, applications we're going to need. Open up a terminal under applications and type in yum install s-y-s-s-t-a-t -S -S put a little space in there and let's take a second to download and yes And once again, Y for yes. And it's done. One more component, the up arrow key, yum install. And this is going to be GMP. Enter. And yes. And so just take a moment to download. And it's working great. This is a very generic installation of CentOS. I didn't install any other server components. Uh, no MySQL, no Apache, no pretty much a default installation with no server components. It did, however, install SendMail for some reason by default, so that needs to be turned off. So let's run the chkconfig command, SendMail, and off. That will prevent SendMail from starting up when your server reboots. And let's run the server, service I mean, service, SendMail, stop. And that will stop the service. Great. Now it's no longer running. Otherwise, it will create a port conflict with uh, the Zimbra mail server. Next, we're going to need to set up our DNS. Uh, once you've installed this, you're going to have to go to the web and download Webmin webmin.com and run the installer package. It's an administrative tool that I've used in a lot of my tutorial videos to help with the configuration of Linux. When you install Zimbra, Zimbra is going to install pretty much everything into one folder. It's going to be almost an all-encompassing um, environment with inside the Zimbra folder. And it has a uniquely configured MySQL, uh, LDAP, a postfix mail server designed to work with Zimbra. So we can't have those other components running uh, somewhere else, otherwise it'll cause port conflicts. And this uh, Zimbra installation needs DNS set up locally. And it needs a, a local MX record so it can communicate within itself and resolve things. Normally you would set up your DNS on, you know, this won't affect like your internet, you know, um, DNS or like your local network DNS. This is just all within the Linux server, the installation of Zimbra itself. Normally when you set up your DNS for a mail server, if you have your own DNS server, you can set up your own MX and A records. If you don't, uh, most people, what they do is they use their registrar, like a GoDaddy. They would put their IP address in and then they would set up their MX records and A records uh, with that provider. And then they would static their uh, public IP on their router and port forward the service ports they need in order to run their mail server. And in Zimbra's case, those ports are going to be 465, 993, 465, and port 25. And now we're going to proceed to this localized, unique installation of DNS to make Zimbra work. Let's go into Webmin, localhost, port 10,000. Let's log into Webmin. And once you log in, there are some, looks like there's going to be some updates available, but this is a virtual 
just uh, installed just for this tutorial, so I'm not going to take any of the updates. Normally I would, but this is going to be deleted after this tutorial video. Let's go into Servers, Find. It's going to be three options. We're going to choose the first one. Set up Name Server for internal non-internet use only. First, we're going to set up our forwarding. And let me put in my ISP's forwarding IP address. Um, a lot of people just put their router IP address because that will forward out to your ISP's um, IP address for forwarding. You can use the IP address for like OpenDNS. Um, so there's a lot of options. Hit save. Uh, next, we need to create two zones. A first, they're both going to be master zones. The first one is a forwarding zone. And let's just set that up real quick. And it needs an email address. Now, I know this isn't your typical email address that looks a little weird. I don't recommend normally doing like that. Normally, it would just be like test at the Jonas.net. I'm just doing this uh, just for the training purpose of this video because um, I have limited resources and I just set up a record on the outside on my name server to accommodate this. But it's not really a recommended way of doing email. I just wanted to clarify that. Hit create. And we're going to create one more zone. Master zone again. This time I reverse. And we're going to put in the local IP address of your server. And email. And everything in this DNS is going to be the local IP address. And create. We have two zones created and the forwarding setup. Let's go into the primary forwarding zone. Set up your mail server record. And it's going to be mail dot, you got it, test to Jonas.net, and a priority of 10, which is pretty much the standard for most mail servers. This is pretty simple so far, huh? We've got our MX created, now let's create our A records in the master zone here. Name, same again, and once again the local IP address of this server. Let's create one more A record to complement the um, MX record. Mail dot whatever domain name, name you're going to use. Create. Oh. Make sure we got the proper IP in there. Going a little faster. I'm limited on time on the YouTube video length. You only get so, a certain amount of time for these videos. So just bear with me. Um, so that's it. Our DNS is up. Let's just stop it and restart it. Forwarding setup. We created two master zones, a reverse and a forward. We set up an MX record in here so it can, the MX uh, resolution can be handled, handled internally. And we set up two A records. Now we're going to have to configure two config files. Actually, the config files are already configured. We just have to make a little tweak on them. So let's go into computer file system, etc, the etsy folder, we're going to go into hosts, we're going to remove this IP address and put in your local IP address once again. I want to remove IP version 6 because I'm not using that. And I'm going to remove this information too. Should make it look nice and clean, that's how I like to do things. Less complicated. Hit save. Next we're going to scroll down a little ways, it's in alpha order, to the resolve config. And we're going to change that to the, once again, the local IP address and our domain name. That's how it's going to search. It picked up the information on my network for the uh, local uh, DNS. We just have to alter it so that everything is contained within the uh, server itself. And that's good. Our DNS is now configured. The next portion of this video would be to install the actual Zimber server. Let's just test our DNS to make sure it's resolving correctly. We're going to do an nslookup command. So we'll type in nslookup. And whatever domain name, name you put in there. And this look up. And it's working good. 221, that is the IP address we're looking for. Next, we're going to run a dig command, dig. -I 
and we're going to test the MX record. Great, there it is. There is our MX record. So everything is resolving the way it should. Um, with this installation of the DNS and the few other applications we stall, installed and the modifications to a couple config files, we are now ready for the installation of Zimbra. Um, using the open source version of Zimbra, I connect to uh, my mail client is Thunderbird and it works very well with the open source version. I use IMAPI and um, SMTP and I downloaded, uh, if you go into the plugin options on Thunderbird, there is a plugin called Zindus, Z-I-N-D-U-S. It allows you to connect to the global address book of your webmail when you, the installation is completed so you can have a shared global address book. It also pulls down your um, personal addresses that you have in your webmail. It's very nice. It also does shared calendars through iCal and CalDev and also, also you can like add other people's calendars and share your own calendar with other users that are shared in the webmail. You can also attach them to your Thunderbird. It also has very good support for the um, mobile devices, uh, the Android or Apple. You can um, add, there's a lot of applications in the app market that will allow you to add the um, global address book and calendars and send and receive email. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching my tutorial video. I will start the next video here in a few minutes. And thank you very much and I will be right back.